Good morning and welcome to this virtual bridge session. And it's a very topical subject today uh, with COP26 coming up. And one of those questions is how do we engage everyone in the conversation? And today uh, we're pleased to have with us Helena Good from Daydream Believers, who's going to talk to us about our support for young people to changing this world in terms of the environment, perhaps. And with that, over to Helena. Hello there. Yes, thanks, Jason. And thanks to Kenji and all the CDN team for uh, inviting me along. And thanks to everybody uh, for, for tuning in. I can understand another another Zoom call is, is not something most of us go, yes. Um, but um, I'm hoping that in, if you're either listening in live or uh, this is a recording, that this is a story that um, comes from my heart. It's a story um, with, with a twist. Um, and it's a story that has creative bravery at its heart. So uh, it's a story, I think, that needs images. So I'm going to use a, a presentation um, and I'm going to just uh, hopefully you can all see that. Uh, thumbs up when the first slide comes in. Brilliant. Um, so to the, the guys that are gathered with us at the minute, I have a bit of a challenge for you. So in, in case you've already switched off and started checking your emails, because we do have the attention span of newts at the minute, um, this, this is our challenge. Um, I would like you to find an image and to be creatively brave and to think about what is one image at the minute that speaks to you, that calls to you, that resonates with you around climate emergency. So for me, this, this is the man, this is the story. Um, and this was the quote, you know, he, he said COP26, this is, this is our last chance. Um, and it's part of the get on with it story that I'm going to talk about today. Um, and I'm going to invite you, and it's a bit of a call out there, um, to anyone who can be creatively brave. At the end of me um, speaking for 20 minutes, I'm going to offer you a chance to put your slide up on the screen and talk for 20 seconds. Just 20 seconds about why this image means something to you, why that quote, why that statement, why that set of data, what, what resonates with you. So, um, as I said, this is my story. And um, on the 15th of August, I made a creatively brave leap. And instead of going back to Edinburgh College as a lecturer, as I would have done um, for over the 27 years I've been a lecturer, I left my job. And um, I call this a leap. Um, because it resonates with a phrase that I uh, have used an awful lot as a lecturer, leap and the net will appear. And on the 15th of August, as a lecturer, I was asked to practice what I preach. And, and for many of us out there, that can make us feel very uncomfortable. It's much easier to preach than to actually practice. But my story um, is not one that follows this because nothing creatively brave does. My story is much more about this kind of map. Um, so many of you will resonate with the pit of confusion and despair in journeys, that kind of pit of the stomach, oh my God, is this going to work? Um, and also this sense of excitement um, and an initial idea, solving a problem, and then that depth of despair again. But the thing that keeps me going in this story is where B is going to be. And my leap of faith was brought about through a determination um, to use all of these emotions for the right reasons. There was anger, frustration, there was excitement, but there was also a belief, if not now, then when, and if not you, then who? And I suppose, in a sense, that story that I tell you comes from the heart, and it's a question I ask all of us today. The story is really about how we can all get on with it. Um, it's easy to think this is someone else's problem. It's easy to think that we, have, we are too busy, we are too tired, we have enough on our plates. But really, um, much like my leap, the energy behind today is a call out to think, what is it you need to do to get on with this challenge? The energy behind my leap was part of the Daydream Believers program, and many of you, um, I'm sure, know about the program. It's a free, not-for-profit organization that looks to place and plant creativity at the heart of education. 
Um, it's asking our employers, our schools, colleges and universities to think of things in a different model, to use what David Price in his book, Open, talks about share, open, free trust, to move to soft and away from command and control. And in doing this and seeing ourselves as collaborators, Daydream Believers offers an opportunity to become an interface, to bring real world challenges from our employers, universities, colleges, schools, and bring them directly into our classroom. We launched two years ago, and these are some of the stats. But I pause here because there's nothing to da about this project. This project has creative bravery in its very heart. And I'm going to tell you a part of this project that will um, resonate strongly because it will, it's part of the story that made me wake up at half past one in the morning in a cold sweat. So while, yes, I look at these stats and I feel excited about what we've achieved, um, we are far from there. Daydream Believers is a really simple process. I like simple. Um, it's built around the ability to be able to go in, download uh, classroom ready resources and check out. So from a teacher's point of view, when they told us that their goalposts change every six months, but their resources don't, we knew that that became our call to action. We knew when, when we heard teachers and lecturers saying, I want to stop saying in the real world that we have to do something about it and bring the real world into the classrooms. In January of this year, we were delighted to work alongside Edinburgh College and Edinburgh Napier University to bring in a new level five and a level six creative thinking qualification. It was their creative bravery to collaborate along that model, share, open, free and trust, that has enabled us to bring this qualification at level five and six into a pilot of 15 schools across Scotland. It's a simple method that has challenge-based learning at the very heart of it. This has enabled us to pilot what we are calling the Creative Bravery Playlist. And it's enabled us to bring our get on with it challenges for climate change directly into our classrooms in schools and in colleges. We've been lucky enough to work with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation on a circular fashion challenge that talks to our young people about fast fashion and enables and support them to set up their own circular fashion brand on the T-Mill platform. It talks to them about circular fashion in terms that are easy to understand. And the slides that you're seeing now is the downloadable deck that teachers can, and lecturers can go in and download and take directly into their classroom. It brings those challenges and those authentic conversations that our young people want to engage with. It, it is a, a, a way of bringing real world change through real world challenges. We were also very lucky to work with Lego alongside Ellen MacArthur on a human habitat challenge. And for a big global brand, they've been incredibly sharing, open and freeing and trusting in the work that they've done with us. They recognize that as young people that we need their voices to be heard. So they set a challenge around a, a space. What would a space look like where communities, nature and business can flourish together? A simple challenge with simple resources and support to enable that question to be discussed and um, uh, worked upon in schools. We've also been working with White Space and Pecha Kucha on the Get On With It Action Pack. This is a, another resource that sits on the site that empowers our young people to use their creativity and tell the world to get on with it and save the planet. Just as you see here, this is the downloadable deck, free resource that anyone can go in and download now and take directly into their classroom. At this point, I feel a little bit like Oprah Winfrey with the swag bag. There's one for everyone in the audience. This is free, this is open, and we trust that you would use this in the way that you would find appropriate. As you see here, we've got lots of call to actions. We've got lots of words that we think would resonate with young people alongside video links, additional things that, we, that uh, teachers and lecturers can use to scaffold this resource. So the get on with it, <coughs> excuse me, the get on with it challenge and the get on with it call to action is one that has creative bravery at its heart. It speaks to the pit of your stomach. It asks you to get your heart racing. 
The challenge is written out very simply, get world leaders, parents and grown-ups to get on with it and save our planet so young people don't have to live with the consequences of their inaction. We want to make people sit up, take notice of young people and take action now. We were also thinking about how we could bring all of these different stories, all of these different voices to COP26. And it's at this point that I pause because this is where the creative bravery story has another twist to it. We were really lucky that Pecha Kucha, um, an amazing organization, I'm sure many of you know that them, um, coming out of Tokyo and um, partnered with us. And they are in 150 countries. Their newsletter has 160,000 people on their, on their list. And they set out this challenge. And Pecha Kucha, as you'll know, is a really simple way of getting um, young people's voices to COP young people's voices to the world. You have a, an option to have either 10 slides, 20 seconds, 20 slides, 20 seconds, and an ability to tell your story. So we pause out there and that might make sense of the challenge that I said at the beginning. If you're already thinking about what is your slide, what is your image, what is your 20 second call out, then this is where you can build and develop it because it only takes another nine for that story to be sent out globally. As part of the work on Daydream, we've been lucky enough to be part of the Creative Bravery Collective. And next week we will run the Creative Bravery Festival, which brings together experiences, tool shed resources, opportunities for anyone out there to come and bring their creatively brave story um, to a group of people that maybe you haven't been able to connect with before, a group of people who want to listen. There's lots going on, everything from Lego, Ellen MacArthur, um, to stories on play and high rise. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do, because it'd be wonderful to see you next week in the field, um, maybe even just to pop into the speakeasy for a chat and a cuppa. The speaker tent, as we said, has lots of different things going on. Um, it's easy to book and everything is free. And that will run from the 4th to the 7th of October. So I pause in the story because this is the bit, the bit I didn't tell Kenji when I was introducing him, as he was saying, this is amazing. And I said, oh, wait till you hear this bit. So this is the bit that at the minute has my stomach in knots, my heart racing and the nervous jitters. As part of our story, we partnered with After the Pandemic, an amazing group of young people, of, of, well, they'd love me to say they're young, of people from Glasgow who are brave at their very heart. Their dream was to use this piece of derelict land next to where COP26 is going to be and to bring the creatively brave story along with all of the Lego stuff that we've been working on to, to this space. They had a vision. And this was the vision for the site. They worked hard over the last year to bring this and, and bring, bring this story to life, bring this vision. But on Sunday of this, of this week, they may have to make an unfortunate call. Who knew that wood and petrol were going to be such a difficult commodity to become to come hold of? And they had to put a call and an end to the site and they had to end their dream. So on Sunday, pit of the stomach, nervous jitters, being aware that we had invested in this dream and wanted to make it part, we had to stop and think. We had to look at creative bravery in action, and we had to think and have to think about what's our options. So just like the climate emergency, at this point, many of us can walk away and go, well, it's not my problem. I wasn't involved. I don't know what I can do. It's all going to end up, you know, in, in a state anyway. Or you have a call to action and you say, let's roll our sleeves up and do something about it. So we have about 48 hours to solve this problem. We've been calling out to everyone we know. We just need a venue. We have a product. We have a story. We have a global brand. 
We have a group of school kids, a group of students, a group of lecturers, a group of uh, learners that want to come. And we know that this is going to work because if we don't do it, who will? And we know that we can do that. So we're asking you to think about how this connects to the get on with it. We're asking you to think about how you as an individual can send out that story, download that pack, get more and more of our learners to share their story so that we can share this at COP26, so that we can bring that story and hold our policymakers accountable to, and ask them to get on with it. And finally, despite the fact that at this stage of the academic year, maybe more of us are exa more exhausted than we would care to imagine. And maybe it's easy to stand and think, well, it's not my problem. But a small act of creative bravery, a small step on your part can make things happen, can enable and bring and influence policy. So I'll stop my sharing there and I'm gonna hand it over back there to, to Jason and also to the call out of anyone wants to, to share any questions or any thoughts and even to be more creatively brave and share the screen and your 20 second call to get on with it. Thank you very much, Helena. That's certainly food for thoughts. And who's going to be brave enough? Hopefully we've got a few people in here that are willing to uh, get stuck in and interact. So uh, I'll, I'll start with Leslie. And, and uh, do you have a photo that you found? I did find the photo. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's uh, one of the 30 different windows on your machine. <laughs> I do, do, do. Right. Oops. Wait a minute. I'll need to open it first. Well, no. okay. Right. Excellent. There we go. It's, uh, you can see I've got it open in Photoshop and I just uh, thought of Wally, -E, the movie, and how inspired I was at the end where there was hope. But I think I chose Wally -E because it kind of demonstrates the real impact that humans have on this planet and human apathy towards the planet. I, but ultimately at the end, there is hope that hopefully we can all undertake small actions that can make a big difference. Excellent, thank you very much, Leslie. And Lizzie, you've appeared, so now you must have a lovely picture. For, for I us. thought I'd dive in and steal this one in case Jasper yeah. does, because I can see he's on the call as well, so I thought I'd get in first. Um, <laughs> um, here we go. Um, so hopefully you can see our lovely polar bear. Um, I think that um, this is why I dived in before Jasper, because our polar bears are at the Highland Wildlife Park, uh, which is where my colleague is based. <laughs> But polar bears are obviously um, kind of like our sort of iconic species for climate change um, because they're obviously, you know, living in the cold places, which are rapidly disappearing. Um, they rely on sort of the icebergs for their hunting, their food sources. Um, but also I chose this specific picture because this is one of our polar bears at the Highland Wildlife Park. Um, and so there is, you know, the work that we are doing to, to try and protect the species and the environment in the wild. Thank you very much, Lizzie. Now, Jasper, have you got a counter image, possibly even cuter than that one? Just dropped you in it. <laughs> uh, I do. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to get it up to mm -hmm. show you. Um, can uh, Do I share? Yes, you can go ahead and share, hopefully. Right. So uh, this one. Um, boom. So I'm not as technical as Lizzie. Great and perfect. No. There we go. Um, this is um, a picture that I actually saw on, on Facebook and it just shows how we need to look after the environment because if you take out the environment, you're going to be taking out so many different species. So everything is all interconnected and um, yeah, it's we, we need to look after the environment because if we don't look after the environment, it's going to have a knock-on effect for many different species, not just one. That's very poignant. Thank you very much. Um, Kenji, have you got one there? <laughs> I, I, I have two. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just, you break the rules. <laughs> Seems like an opportunity. You're still only getting 20 seconds. Um, right, so <laughs> I, I had two, and and the the first one I had was was really Greta, who who's who's made a difference to me, mo- mo- mostly about embarrassing me about the fact that somebody so young can do so much to to make change. But the person who's really embarrassed me is my my daughter Runa, um, who's nine and at primary school, and they they've been doing work around COP26, um, using materials, talking about the environment. And they were all tasked with coming up with ideas about how to save the planet. So what, what my daughters decided, and I don't really want to say this because I'm completely failing, is um, I explained to her about recycling bins and how we use the bins outside. And we have four. And one of them, the green one, is for plastics. And she said plastics are bad. And because she's tasked with dragging the bin out every week, she knows it's completely full every week, like it's completely full. So she she's she's drawn a line halfway down the bin. And she said that our project is that we have to try and just have the bill half filled um, every every three weeks when it's collected. And that that's our target. And but sad to say, I, I, I've been failing. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're trying, we're getting there and we're thinking about it. But it, it, it was such a clever thing. Oh, but for me, proud parent, <laughs> for her to suggest that, you know, I loved it. So that's you know, amazing. I should do more. <laughs> amazing, Kenji. And I think it is that bit, isn't it, of our, our you know, our young people know um, what needs and and it's it's not that difficult. And I, I, I do, you know, even going back to the, the Greta image and thinking it was a piece of card and a paintbrush that started. She, you know, she wrote a sign, she sat outside um, it's those small actions. This is amazing uh, images. Thank you. Any any more, Jason? I'm going to call call out to yourself. Did did you find one? Yeah, I'm going to do uh, one here, and it's this behind me because having moved out here and being um, more um, uh, uh, yeah in, in engrossed in nature um, in uh, living in this part of the world, the Highland Boundary Fault, going through the geology, the uh, flora and fauna has been quite um, amazing coming from the central belt previously, um, but more so has been about actually and through the the trigger of COVID nineteen about uh, localizing my uh, I have a market garden that I use for my vegetables just on the road, the shops that I do that. And actually, I think the, the, the interesting fact is, that the fact is about normalisation. Before I accept uh, asparagus coming from Peru, why would I want to have asparagus coming from Peru? Why do I need to eat asparagus all year? And just thinking again about those real choices that we make, saving 10 pence for the sake of what? Um, and uh, actually, I'm, I'm a lawyer by background, and so I'm interested in actually changing the norms so that things become unacceptable, not only unacceptable, but actually illegal perhaps as well, whatever triggers it takes for a new norm that's brilliant yeah and what you what each and every one of you ha- have done and um, before we go to James and Fiona we're not going to let you off but uh, if you do have one but um what I would say is you've started your Pecha Kucha so if if one creatively brave thing that you do today is create just nine other slides and upload them and put them in and, and not only will your voice have been heard here it will go right across the world. Your story will be told. And what we are looking for is this legacy from COP. And what we would really love is that this get on with it call for action that comes really from the heart of Scotland um, is the get on with it legacy that we we use to call our policymakers um, to to account. Um, So sometimes we do something or we think, oh, yeah, I just don't have time. Uh, I'm not sure I can do it. Um, you've just shown that, you know, one image, 20 seconds, very, very powerful. Okay, and I wouldn't want to leave out Fiona and James, if either of you are able to uh, come in, if you want to. I know your circumstances might not allow, but uh, I'll give you a few seconds to jump in if you want to. This is the so, first time we've ended up with the entire audience as co-host of a Zoom and <laughs> video. <laughs> We should do it more often to be fair. Democratization at work. <laughs> so, Fiona, did you have a debate? 
It's not an image. I could only oh. find the, the web page annoyingly, which I've put the link to in, in the chat. It was a, a program that was on with Simon Reeves a couple of um, a couple of nights ago, and he was in Madagascar and he was showing you the lemurs, and then the ca the camera sort of went wider, and you could see that actually everything was surrounded by houses, and um, you know the, their their habitat had just you know been destroyed with deforestation, and then he took you took you back a bit, showed you a bit what was left of the forest and then showed you what the, the rest of the land was getting used, used to plant um, something. I can't remember the name of it, but it was used for plant-based packaging. And then I started to feel a bit frustrated because I had some plant-based packaging the other day and there's no recycling facilities for it. So I was like, ah! <laughs> so yes, thank you. Thanks, Kenji. That's or whoever shared that. Yeah, thank you. That's brilliant, Fiona. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to have a look at that. Uh, James is okay. Oh, well, James is Yeah, I was just uh, having a think about that at the last minute as to what to do. And uh, I'm going back on uh, old standards. So, uh, my background more in science communication. I, have to, I always get uh, a bit carried away with uh, bigger picture stuff. I go off on tangents all the time. And so I thought I would go off on a tangent because uh, everyone loves a good tangent. So this is uh, the sort of thing that immediately jumps into my head. So as an SS, and we're always concerned about everything on, on this sort of scale here. We're looking at us and all the, the megafauna we see around us. And this year, we've had massive problems going down this end of the scale as we jump down towards our lovely flu viruses and uh, obviously COVID that's been going around. So we often have difficulty comprehending everything else around us, let alone something on this kind of scale here. And yet all the problems we're facing, and you mentioned it obviously in your presentation, it, it all comes to working together. So all of these things that we're going up for, th these are not isolated individual creatures. These are inherently all interconnected with us just here. Recently at the zoo, we now have a, a new sloth enclosure. At the sloths themselves, they have unique algae and, mo and moths that live on the sloths. And we think that for some of those sloth species, they are unique to sloths. They reproduce and live on sloths. That's it, they are a micro ecosystem in their own right. That's one species. Jasper's tree, each tree in the Amazon is an entire universe to hundreds of other animals and plants that live there. Some studies pointing out there might be up to a good 50, 60 unique invertebrate species per tree. And then we start scaling that up again. And we need to really be thinking on this scale we're all infinitely interconnected. You know, th this is what we need to focus on, especially when we continue to zoom out again and realize that we are all just one small part of something far, far bigger once again. That what connects us and what makes us all similar is far, far more important than what makes us different. And by getting us all working together and showing those similarities, that is by far the more important thing that, that we can do by somehow getting us all to realize that we're not each separate individual people. We are one community, one planet. It, it's very idealistic, but it, it's the kind of thing that always jumps into my head about trying to get everyone to realize that we are inevitably one community. And therefore by helping ourselves and helping other people, we're, we're helping everyone next door. So that's the kind of thing that immediately jumps into my head. Wonderful. Well, that's idealism with real consequences, mind you. So um, all, all very, very pertinent. Thank you very much for that wonderful graphic of scale. Um, Helena, I'll hand back to you for a few closing words in the recorded section. Just want to uh, thank everybody um, for a being creatively brave. Maybe you did have a bit of the nervous jitters and thought this wasn't what I signed up for, but the images were incredibly powerful and um, and they just you know resonate back to that. Tell me a story, make me care. And um, I've just put the, the the daydream believers. That's the link in. It's feasible for anyone to use these. Um, you know, as I said, um, just download them. Let's. Let's make this our call to action. Let, let's think about how can we get on with it? And how does that resonate just with us today? What's that small step that we could take that will make a difference? And let's enable our young people to have that autonomy and also that power so that their voices can be heard 
and that that is our story, our very brave, creative story that comes out of COP, coming out of the heart of Scotland. Thank you very much to the CDN and JISC, I always need to make, and Jason and Kenji for just uh, um, enabling me to talk from my bedroom. Um, and uh, wonderful to, to be here. And thanks to everybody for participating. Well, thank you very much, Helena, for that insight and that very exciting programme. Thank you very much.